Here, you can be your best. The best train here. Learn here. Succeed here. Perform here. Win here. Thrive here. Itawamba Community College. The best start here. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the ICC Hour here on Super Talk Mississippi 101.9 FM. I'm Adam Gore, and I do appreciate you guys joining us here on a Tuesday afternoon, taking time out of your afternoon to learn a little bit more about Itawamba Community College. Now, before we jump into the show, I do hope that everyone had coming off a great Easter, uh, had time to spend some time with family and friends and loved ones there, uh, and I hope you're having a great start to your week as well. Now, as always, the ICC Hour is being presented to you by our friends at Renaissance Bank. Renaissance Rewards Extra is the checking account that checks all the boxes. Roadside assistance? Check. Cell phone insurance? Check. More than 400,000 local shopping discounts? Check. Up to $25 per month in ATM refunds and a great rate? Check. All in an easy-to-use mobile app. To open an account or find out more about Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking, go to renaissancebank.com or visit us at any of our more than 190 locations throughout the South. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. On this week's edition of the ICC Hour, we're going to talk with the Director of Advancement, Michael Upton. He's going to tell us more on how you can help uh, support Itawamba Community College, whether it be through scholarships, uh, endowments, uh, joining the Indian Club. A lot of great information there coming up from Michael Upton, so you want to be sure and stay tuned for that in the first part of the show. The second part of the show, we're going to focus on the ICC men and women's soccer teams. They opened their season this past Thursday, unfortunately with a pair of losses to Jones, but they're looking to rebound tomorrow here in Fulton when they play the Southwest. So we'll learn more about the men's and women's soccer teams. Of course, the women's team coming off the historic season last year, uh, looking to build on that for some more success this season. All that and a little bit more here on this week's ICC Hour. So don't go anywhere. We're going to hear a few words from our sponsors and be back with more right after this on Super Talk Mississippi. Why settle for a checking account that just holds your money? Renaissance Rewards Extra gives you so much more. Like savings at more than 400,000 retailers, 24-7 roadside assistance, a cell phone protection plan worth up to $400, $25 in ATM fee refunds per monthly cycle, and a great interest rate when you meet three easy qualifications. Get extra today at rewardsextra.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. Today tastes like game day at home. Like assigned couch seating. <laughs> tastes like coffee table dining. And an ice cold Coke to cool down the heat. It tastes like the game you've waited for all week with friends you've known your whole life. <laughs> Today tastes like watching football is supposed to. And it never tasted this good. Coca-Cola, together tastes better. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is what we anticipate, what we work for, what we want to improve. At Itawamba Community College, we offer the courses, pathways, and the training that can help turn your vision of tomorrow into a reality. So why wait? Your tomorrow can start today at Itawamba Community College. The best start here. And welcome back to the ICC Hour here on Super Talk Mississippi, 101.9 FM. I'm Adam Gore, and I greatly, greatly appreciate you guys taking time out of your day 
uh, every Tuesday to join us here on the ICC Hour. Now, one thing we're going to talk to today, we're going to talk with the Director of Advancement and Alumni and Foundation Director here at ICC, Michael Upton. And it's going to be how to support ICC. Uh, it's something that's becoming more and more uh, important for all colleges now is to uh, get that support from the community around them to help give back to the community. So it's almost investing in yourself when you support ICC. And Michael, before we jump into the show, uh, how's it going? Going well, Adam. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about it. There's various different ways that you can support Itawamba Community College here. And uh, I'll let you pick, and I'll, I'm just going to chime in and ask questions along the way. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, where do you want to start? Well, I think probably most people are most familiar with scholarships as a way to support ICC and to support our students here. So I think that's probably a good place to start is with scholarships. Okay. All right, so let's talk about it. Foundation scholarships, uh, of course, uh, if – you're listening right now. April the 1st is that deadline, so uh, still got some of those to uh, be able to get to there. But uh, let's talk about some of those scholarships. All right. Well, we have different types of scholarships here. We uh, Most are geared to our traditional incoming students, and that can be a student that is uh, fresh out of high school and is coming in to join us in the fall, or it can be an existing student as well. We have some scholarships that are targeted for adult learners, those who are coming back and in support of them. We have a number of uh, scholarships that are in the career tech area. So if you're focused there on our Belden Center, uh, they can help you there. And what one area that is greatly growing is the number of scholarships that are being established to support our health science programs on the Tupelo campus. Yeah, those are growing more and more important every day these days. Uh, so what what can people know or what do people need to know about those scholarships other than what they go towards how can they apply or how can they give to those scholarships? Well, anyone that wants to give to an existing scholarship or have a conversation with us about establishing a new scholarship, we would love to have you give us a call at 662-862-8039 or email us at foundation at iccms.edu and let us talk to you about how you can support an existing scholarship or establish a new one. For those who are interested in applying for our existing scholarships, you can go to our webpage at iccms.edu forward slash foundation and see a listing of existing scholarships, a description of the scholarship, uh, the qualifications, all the information about it, and also how to apply online. Well, I know uh, people are, we've had some recent people contribute to the college. Uh, can you talk about some of those uh, and maybe give them an example of what you're talking about through those uh, scholarship and endowments? Sure, we've been blessed in the last year to have a number of new um, scholarships created, uh, a lot of those being endowed, which means we take the money that is given, we invest it, and we pay the scholarship out of the investment returns every year, and therefore that scholarship lasts long after you and I are no longer working at the college, Adam. So, uh, as I mentioned, healthcare being a, a great growing area, uh, we've had a number of scholarships uh, for nursing established recently, including um, the Dr. Um, Billy and Mrs. Barbara Collum scholarship, the Dr. Joe Jigaleski scholarship, and a number of others. Uh, and in other areas, uh, we've had the Joy Tomlinson scholarship established in support of health information technology, Kayla Murphy Black Memorial Annual Scholarship established in support of students in respiratory therapy, and I could go on and on. So those are some, some of the new ones, but also you know, education is an area where we've had a number of new, style, new scholarships established, including the North Mississippi Education Consortium. They established a scholarship with us, and uh, the uh, Jenny Witt Mounts Adult Learner Endowed Scholarship, which is one of those that's targeted toward adult learners who are getting a degree in education to support them in their pursuits. So really and truly, it's just one of those that we do invite you to visit iccms.edu, look up the foundation, and you'll see all the great opportunities that students have, but also can give you an idea of uh, how you can contribute to Itawamba Community College, maybe in the memory of a former uh, classmate, a, a family member. The, it's unlimited. Basically, you, you come talk to Michael and talk about your plans and how you would like it to set it up, and he can he can make that work for you. Is that is that correct? That sounds perfect, Adam. All right. So uh, let's talk about the annual fund. What is the annual fund? Well, the annual fund is how a great number of our alums, friends, uh, in the community support us, and that is typically when they give uh, through uh, 
either to an unrestricted fund that is determined for the best need, whatever the college needs are, or maybe they want to support an area on campus that they support. Maybe it's athletics. Maybe it was the band. Maybe you were in PTK and that was transformative for you. So you want to support the current students in PTK or the math department. I mean, you know, whatever it is that you want to give to, it doesn't matter how much, but you want to support the college. Uh, we w greatly welcome all those gifts every year. They make a huge difference in helping us to go above and beyond what our state budget allows to continue to be the number one community college in Mississippi. And I think it's important to say right there, we're, we're doing a lot with less. And it seems to be less and less. Now, I will say, you know, things have gotten better over the past few years with uh, with the help of uh, the folks down in Jackson. And we greatly, greatly appreciate everything they do. But uh, costs are going up. Expenses are going up. Improvements are needed. Uh, so that annual fund there is very important to help continue to be successful here at ICC. Um, I know uh, something you've talked about is planned giving. Uh, and that's uh, through here at the college and other situations there. So talk, talk to us about planned giving. Yeah, that's something that we are really seeing a, an increase in here recently at the college and would love to talk to more people about. A lot of people get a little bit scared when they hear the word planned giving. They think that maybe that we're going to come ask you to leave everything in your will to us, and that's not the case. Planned giving represents a wide variety of ways that you can plan out how you want to support the college. That could range from something as obvious as naming the college as a beneficiary in your will or your estate, but also it could be by um, purchasing a life insurance policy and naming us as a beneficiary. There are a number of other uh, ve uh, gift vehicles that we can talk to you about, uh, annuities, gift annuities, uh, different things that you can do in order to plan out and establish how you want to uh, make an impact either currently or in the future. Um, it doesn't have to be a uh, end of life situation, but planned giving is a great way to look and see how you can have the most benefit and most impact on Itawama Community College. Another way you can be involved here at ICC is called the Indian Club. Uh, it's something that uh, we do to support our athletics, uh, and it's something that uh, a lot of students are starting to give back to now that we're former uh, student athletes here at ICC. Talk to us about it. We've got, what is it, 11 sports now uh, here, and that's not counting cheer, band, uh, things of that sense. So talk to us about the Indian Club. Sure. We were very excited last year to bring the Indian Club kind of more in conjunction with the foundation so that we can help support them, help support the athletic department and all the great things they do there. So as you mentioned, Adam, each of our 11 sports has their own um, Indian Club account, and that includes if in men's and women's basketball, softball, baseball, men's and women's soccer, you know, every, every individual team has an account that you can give to support that team. Uh, there's also accounts for sports information, for the athletic director, and uh, after some of the great success we had a couple years ago in baseball and softball, we want to help honor our successful athletes. So they established a championship uh, club as well to help when we have championships to support purchasing things like ring, championship rings and things like that for our athletes. But with each of our Indian clubs, it, it, I wish we could have one of the coaches along here to talk about that. It makes a huge difference in the level of excellence that they can provide to their team. Mm -hmm. And these funds can help support them in travel, in purchasing meals, in purchasing equipment. You know, it's surprising uh, how much a bucket of baseballs will cost yeah. or a new bucket of tennis balls. And, you know, until you're around these teams and see how much they practice – and how much they go through in a game situation or a match situation, if, if that's what their sport has got, then you know you go through a lot of equipment in a year. Uh, shoe, you know, a uniform might last a whole year, but shoes wear out, yeah. rackets wear out, uh, ba bats break. Uh, you go through a lot of, ba like I said earlier, a lot of baseballs, a lot of golf balls, mm -hmm. a lot of tennis balls, um, things like that. So you can make a big impact on the athletic success of Itawamba Community College by supporting our athletic teams through the Indian clubs. Absolutely, and uh, I do like that you uh, gave sports information a plug there as well because uh, that's how we can help continue to bring shows like the ICC Hour and uh, all those broadcast your way as well. Now, one thing that I took advantage of during the pandemic uh, that a lot of people may not know about, and I appreciate you telling me about it, 
uh, I say during the pandemic, I still do today, uh, Amazon Smile. Uh, that's a way you can shop and still give back to ICC. Yeah, that is a, a really neat new thing that we're taking advantage of here. Um, I would dare say that probably the vast majority of our listening audience has purchased at least one thing this year from Amazon. I know some have purchased a lot from Amazon. Yeah. So uh, what you can do is you can go and go to Amazon Smile, and that's going to be a little bit different outlay from your traditional you know, Amazon page where you're searching. And you go there, and you want to log in with your normal account information that will tie to your Amazon account. And then it will allow you to search for uh, any number of nonprofits that – are tied in with Amazon Smile. And if you'll look for Itawama Community College Foundation, you'll find us. You pick us as your charity of choice. And then once you shop through that platform, uh, they send us a percentage of your uh, total bill back to support the college. So let's say you're going to go out and do some Christmas shopping and you're going to spend, you know, a lot, you're going to you're going to do a lot of it online in order to avoid the crowds or maybe to be a little bit safer uh, with uh, viruses and healthcare things going on, then you can know that a portion of that is going to go back and support the college. And all you've had to do is do what you're going to do anyway. Yeah, and it's really simple to use. Uh, just like you said, type in Amazon Smile. You can type in Itawamba. Uh, and then bring it up there, and so you search for Itawamba Community College as well. Well, Michael, uh, anything else that I know uh, we can encourage people to visit? ICCMS.edu, search foundation, but also alumni, uh, because we still have the Alumni Association. Uh, just kind of touch on that real quick. Sure, the Alumni Association um, exists in order to better connect our alumni, former students, uh, friends in the community, current students and parents, anybody that wants to know more about the college, be more involved with the college, uh, maybe in a non-financial way. We would love to have you join our alumni association. You can join on an individual yearly membership or a lifetime membership and uh, just find out about uh, some of the activities we put on, especially during the fall around athletics. You know, we'll have uh, the homecoming events that we support, uh, President's Tailgate for certain football games, things like that. And also we're doing a lot to promote the college on social media. Uh, we have a lot of number, yeah, we have a, increased our social media presence is what I'm trying to say. And you can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and find about things that are tied to alumni. Uh, one of the things I love that we're doing is on Thursdays, we do a throwback Thursday. Yeah. We have a wonderful collection of items that our alumni and friends have donated to us. And it might be a uh, former Letterman jacket. It might be a, a piece from a, uh, a musical that was done in the theater department. It might be a beanie from the first class in 1948 that the freshman men who had to have their head shaved and wear the beanie uh, mm -hmm. got one of those as well. So we like to highlight those, put those out there every Thursday. And it's really fun to see the conversations that come from that, the memories that that brings up for people, and they go back and forth and share with us, and hopefully they reach out and share more items so that we can share those with you as well. Just another way that we can kind of reconnect people with Itawama Community College. And we've been talking with Michael Upton, uh, the Director of Advancement here at Itawama Community College. Anything else we need to talk about before we cut you loose? No, that's wonderful. Anyone that wants to reach out and find out what they can do to support the college, either from alumni or foundation, either way, please give us a call at 662-862-8039. And we'll be back more of the ICC Hour right after this on Super Talk Mississippi. Renaissance Rewards Extra is the checking account that checks all the boxes. Roadside assistance? Check. Cell phone insurance? Check. More than 400,000 local shopping discounts? Check. Up to $25 per month in ATM refunds and a great rate? Check. All in an easy-to-use mobile app. To open an account or find out more about Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking, go to renaissancebank.com or visit us at any of our more than 190 locations throughout the South. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Hey, Pam. What's that? New slices and sticks. Half pizza, half Italian cheese sticks. What's that? I spread it butter hub. An unexpected combination. Just six bucks. Acres away. Pizza, pizza. 
Introducing slices and sticks. Four slices of pepperoni pizza together with eight Italian cheese sticks. A combination as unexpected as the Saxa Telephone. Hey, Mom. New slices and sticks, just six bucks. Pizza, pizza. Hey, Indian fans. I'm Ricky Murphy, real estate agent, Tommy Morgan Realtors, and I'm also a proud alumni of the All-American Marching Band. Itawamba Community College was my home for two years, and where you decide to make your home will be one of the most important decisions of your life. Whether you're looking to create a plan to buy your first home, or if you're ready today to make a move into your forever home, give me a call or send me a message so we can discuss your next move. And for my family, Roll Trav! Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd, getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story is you. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. That's home. <laughs> that's just like the Ravens. That's just like Pahokee, Florida. Um, that's my second home. I got my degree from there, my first degree, college degree. It's part of my heart, it's part of my soul, it's part of my spirit. And, you know, it's everything. It, it'll want community college, baby. Uh, it's, it's everything. It shaped me up to being a great man because it was part of the journey of me becoming the young man I am today. And um, it's home, man. That, that's. That's it, like, I can go there and lay my head down without no problems. It'll want community college the best star here. And talking with Coach Mike Sullivan about the upcoming soccer season. And Sully, first off, appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us. Absolutely. A uh, little weird this year. Uh, we're typically wrapping up 7-on-7 seven seven by now, but instead we're just weeks away from the start of the season. Just talk about the challenges that this year has presented, basically having a full year to wait to start your, start your season. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you're like, on the front end, you're thinking, this is going to be great. Mm-hmm. i got eight months to get these guys ready. Well, that is good. I mean, we've gotten a lot of good work in. we got some fall games in. You know, got to see our progress. We did very well in those. We won two and tied one. Uh, you know, but at the same time, it does become a little bit of a grind for the players and for everyone. And, you know, and the guys get antsy to play a game, one that counts, one that matters. And, you know, we're finally getting close to that time. And I think once we get to, you know, the first match against Gulf Coast next week, I think we'll kind of settle back into what feels like normal, even though it won't be normal times. So, I mean, we're excited about that. I know the guys are ready to play. You know, we've been looking fairly good so far. But, again, I think it's just a matter of, you know, eight months of playing each other. Yeah. You know, they're ready to see somebody in a different color uniform. And I have a feeling we'll really, you know, kind of bust out of the gate and hopefully uh, do really well. And that's, that's one thing a lot of people don't think about for, you know, 19, 20, 21-year-olds. You do eventually just get tired and not to – coin the phrase of AI, but you get tired of practice. Yeah. You know, and you get you get to that point where you're just like, you look, you've seen this guy straight across from you for eight months, you're sick <laughs> of that guy. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those, you do ready to get that started there. Well, let's look back at last season. Uh, good season last season, built on some positives, rolling into this season. Just your thoughts on last season and how you can build on it heading into this one. Yeah, I mean, last season we had a very solid year. I mean, we lost uh, in the quarterfinals to Gulf Coast, who ended up going on to the final game. Um, you know, we, we really played well. We scored a lot of goals. Defensively, we did a good job. I think we had one of our top three goals against average in the history of the program. We gave up 1.2 goals per game. You know, over the course of about 20 games, it's not bad. Um, you know, we were at the top of that list all the time. And, you know, goals scored, we, we averaged about three. So, I mean, going into this game, you know, this year, we're kind of hoping to kind of bring a lot of the same flavor. You know, I think we've got uh, – as many or more uh, offensive weapons as we did last year. And defensively, we're bringing back most of our back line. So, uh, you know, and our goalkeeper, Brandon Tietenwa, is coming back off injury for a third year. So, I mean, we're we're feeling pretty confident defensively. Uh, you know, we only gave up uh, two goals in the fall over the course of three games. So, you know, we felt pretty good about that as well. So I think that, you know, last year, Hopefully we'll kind of, even though last year feels like it was a million years ago at this point, um, you know, we, we were looking about at it the other day, and uh, the last real game we played was uh, sometime in early November or late wow. October. 
of uh, yeah. 2019. Wow. And it's wow. 2021. Yeah, that's so, insane. That's when you look at it from that standpoint, you're just like, wow. And you know, I know a lot of people in the country have gone through these types of problems, so we're not alone. But it is weird when you think yeah. it's literally been a year and a half since we played a real game. But wow, I, I, that just blew my mind because yeah. I didn't even thought about that either. All right, that playoff game was the last yeah, one. It was. So, uh, but the guys are ready, you know. And I think last year, hopefully, with the ones that we have coming back and some of our leadership, I, I think we're going to be okay. We're talking with ICC men's soccer coach Mike Sullivan. Uh, and let, let me into what I was going to ask next. Talk about the guys that are returning uh, and what you expect out of them this season. Yeah, I mean, on our back line, we've got uh, uh, our starters of Caden Mitchell, Braden Hellams, and uh, Brandon Tietenwall being the goal. And then we have uh, a newcomer, Connor uh, Murphy, a uh, freshman from Lewisburg, who should be anchoring our back line. Uh, David Marquez will be playing a little bit in the back line, a little bit in the midfield. And then you have Carson O'Daniel that's coming back, uh, and Jalen Boyd, our returning players. And then we've got some really good freshmen that have come in. But with all those sophomores that are starters coming back, we also have some guys that played some key minutes uh, from last year. You know, we've got uh, Ruben Perez, gave us some solid minutes at midfield. We're expecting the same thing out of him this year. Noah LaCastro will be a big help on the back line with his experience. So, you know, we're looking forward to some of the younger guys meshing in with the newer ones. And, and hopefully things are going to roll along really well. And one of the benefits of having that eight months to prepare is helping bring those freshmen to speed. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think people really realize how big of a jump it is from the high school level to the JUCO level on soccer. Because, I mean, they're, they're the best of the best whenever it comes to this level. Absolutely. That is the number one thing, in my opinion, uh, in our game, is the speed of play. Uh, the speed that things happen, the speed that you have to make things happen. In other words, in high school, you may have two or three touches, maybe even a not so great first touch to be, well, well you'll get away with, but not here. Uh, at this level, everything's quicker and faster. And I mean, from a standpoint of how COVID uh, set up our year, that was very helpful, I think, for the freshmen. I mean, they didn't have to play a game 13 days after they got here. They got to assimilate and, you know, have six, seven, eight months of practice, a couple of ex exhibition games. So there's some guys, freshmen, that I've seen that I know are going to be way better off starting next next week versus had we you know had to start like we normally do in August. So that is a benefit to them for sure. All right, so this is the first season you guys are in D2. Uh, let's talk about the uh, biggest difference from Division Two to what you were previously. Well, it's a very exciting time because um, the truth is realistically with our uh, restrictions and how we recruit and money-wise, um, you know, in the old days of where we played in D1, but we're technically a D2 status, you know, now we actually have a realistic shot at making the national tournament and maybe even making some noise there. Our state champion this year, plus one at-large berth from a group of four, mm -hmm. will make the national tournament in Kansas. And, uh, you know, we always like to say in the past, our goal is, hey, let's win the state, win the region, win the district, make the national tournament. And it was always a goal. Right. But no Mississippi men's team has ever been to the national tournament in the history of NJCA soccer. Right. That's all going to change this year. Yeah. Um, you know, my thought, you know, I haven't probably said it much lately to the guys, but uh, why not be first? Yeah. Why not be the first one? Because nobody can ever take the first one away. Right. So if we can find a way to win the state title this year, we'd be the first team ever that goes to the national tournament for uh, soccer in, men, in Mississippi. That'd be something nice to hang your hat on for the rest of your days. Uh, so I think, you know, I, there's a lot of good teams out there. Some of the usual suspects, Pearl River, Gulf Coast, Hines, Jones. You know, I mean, a lot of those guys are still going to be loaded. But, uh, you know, we feel good that we can compete with them and, uh, you know, maybe get some good results against them. And we're talking with ICC men's soccer coach Mike Sullivan, and we're going to wrap things up here, Sully. Just some final thoughts of the season coming up, and then kind of you're you're an open air area, so people could come out and support you this year. Uh, the weather, well, I say the weather's going to be nice. It's raining right now, yeah. but hopefully by the time you guys get the season rolling, rolling, it'll settle down, and you'll have some beautiful weather to play in. Absolutely, uh, I you know we've never played in the spring before, so this is all brand new, and uh, I have a profound new uh, sense of. I don't know what the word is, but for these spring sports, yeah. I, I see what they go through now. Yeah. Uh, it's a day-to-day -day process on, like, with all this rain, like, all right, where are we going to train today? How are we going to do this and do that? But, uh, but yeah, we're open air, and uh, soccer parents and fans and people that come watch, they're generally the kind of people that bring their lawn chairs, bring tents. 
they spread out anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I think with uh, with everything that's going on in the world, we're still going to be a very safe opportunity for people to get out and uh, see a little bit of good soccer. Our women's team is going to be super solid this year, and hopefully we are too. So, you know, come out and watch us play. We've got 14 games, seven at home and seven on the road. And uh, our schedule's up on letsgoicc.com. So, I mean, uh, you know, come out and watch some good soccer, hopefully. Well, Sully, I appreciate your time and good luck this season. Thank you much. Renaissance Rewards Extra is the checking account that checks all the boxes. Roadside assistance? Check. Cell phone insurance? Check. More than 400,000 local shopping discounts? Check. Up to $25 per month in ATM refunds and a great rate? Check. All in an easy-to-use mobile app. To open an account or find out more about Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking, go to renaissancebank.com or visit us at any of our more than 190 locations throughout the South. Renaissance Bank understanding you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online, davisfordsales.com. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd, getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Today tastes like game day at home. Like assigned couch seating. <laughs> tastes like coffee table dining. And an ice cold Coke to cool down the heat. It tastes like the game you've waited for all week with friends you've known your whole life. <laughs> Today tastes like watching football is supposed to. And it never tasted this good. <laughs> Coca-Cola. Together tastes better. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is what we anticipate, what we work for, what we want to improve. At Itawamba Community College, we offer the courses, pathways, and the training that can help turn your vision of tomorrow into a reality. So why wait? Your tomorrow can start today at Itawamba Community College. The best start here. And we're talking with ICC women's soccer coach David Strother. Coach, before we get into it, man, thanks for uh, taking time out of your day. Yeah, th thanks for having me. It's exciting to finally be back in the office and uh, speaking with you about uh, things we got coming up for the upcoming season. Well, let's just talk about it first. And this is the first thing I talked about with Sully as well. You had eight months to prepare for the season. And, you know, right now you're wrapping up 7-on-7. Seven -seven. Mm -hmm. uh, so just talk about the dynamic that is has been this year, the complete change. You've got more time to practice, but eventually the players – not and again I coined AI earlier. You know you got to be tired of practice. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you're exactly right. We actually had a discussion last night about this. It, it's going to get to a point where we just want to play other people now. Mm -hmm. And so eight months of uh, being drawn out and, uh, and and taking a little bit or a lot longer time than what it normally does. We're trying to take eight months to do what we normally do in mm -hmm. three or four weeks. Yeah. And so uh, finding that rhythm and, and trying to make sure that there's a, a continuous growth uh, through that whole entire eight month period. It's been challenging uh, not only for the players. It's been challenging for myself. Uh, making sure that we're always continuing to grow and always continue to improve without looking towards competition. So now that we're finally getting into that upcoming season, there's excitement um, on both ends as a coach, and I know the players are certainly excited, and we're, we're just looking forward to finally getting able to kick off. Absolutely. Well, last year, historic. Mm -hmm. Just best season ever in the program's history. How are you going to build off that success with the girls returning, new faces coming in as well? 
to work to continue to build on that success. Well, great thing about JUCO is you're always restarting the program yeah. almost. You know, you have half of your team that always leaves and half of your team that returns. Uh, one thing I've been very prideful about my time here at Iwamba and also not, not just what I've been able to do as a coach, but the players that have come in, we've always been able to grow on the previous year's success. And so we're going to continue to do that. Uh, we're not necessarily dictating it off of wins and losses. We never do. Mm -hmm. We always just do it. We always just judge it off of uh, how, how much we're pr performing, how much we're improving from when we started to when we finish. And now that we've had eight extra months, <laughs> hopefully there's a lot more yeah. improvement that's going to take place. Uh, but you, you know, you can you can put accolades towards wins and losses, and we certainly had a record-breaking season last year. But we're looking to just continue to grow the program in a positive state, not just on what we do on the field, but also off the field. And I feel like this class has just been doing a phenomenal job over that for the past eight months. And the good thing is, and I say the good thing, but it's a unique thing. You're actually Division Two now, mm -hmm. which technically we've kind of been Division Two competing in Division One. That's right. But talk about the unique uh, aspect of going in now, being that Division Two program, where the playing field's a lot, a little bit more even, a lot more even now. Yeah, no, no, I think you're exactly right, and that's something that I've been excited about, um, knowing that as a Division One competitor, you were always going up against other schools that were able to offer full tuition along with room and board, uh, with a Division Two status, uh, which is what we've always been um, through our scholarship packages, is uh, just offering the full tuition without room and board. So anytime that we got to the next level, once you got into the region tournament or once you got to the national tournament, the, the playing field wasn't even. Right. And, and so it's nothing against uh, our opponents. You know, they're, they're just in a different bracket. Our competitive level is going to stay the same. I think it's going to even raise our competition, uh, both, in our, both in our conference, but also at the national level, because once we get to that national tournament, everyone's on an even playing field playing at the same Division II level. And so that's exciting because uh, we've been able to show a lot more respect for the Mississippi soccer product. Now there's an automatic bid for whoever wins the conference conference this upcoming season makes an automatic bid into the national tournament, which would be a first time uh, occurrence for anyone in the state of Mississippi. And it's like Sully said, why not be the first? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, and we're talking with Coach uh, David Strother, ICC women's soccer coach. And Coach, before we talk about this upcoming season, some of the returning players, let's just look back at last year. Mm -hmm. I know uh, you don't like to look back because you look back and not moving forward, That's but right. a special year like that doesn't come around all the time. Just sort of reflect on last year's successes and uh, just the season as a whole. Yeah, well, it was definitely successful, most successful we've had in the history of the program here at Iwamba. Uh, but for me, it was just about the journey. You know, starting out in the process of August, and I think we had 16 freshmen with uh, with that season last year. And so just seeing the growth that took place from them, because uh, we didn't start out great. Uh, I think we were maybe one in, one in three as we were getting into the first leg of our division matches. Um, so it wasn't a great start on our behalf. I thought we certainly could have been a lot better, but to see the buy-in, it just took a little bit longer, but yeah. to see the buy-in take place on a gradual game-by-game, practice-by-practice uh, status, uh, it was amazing. It was it was one of those seasons that you never want to see end. Yeah. You know, we, we got into a run where I think we had 16 games in a row that we that we won, and it got to a point where I was forgetting what the number was, <laughs> and my players were, were reminding me, but I've never been the type of coach that really builds on records. I couldn't tell you what my overall record right. is here at Iwamba. I just try to focus on the upcoming game and, and then the next game after after that uh, but it was neat to see my players buy into that and there were even times where it got close to to uh, maybe a tie and it was looking like maybe this game wasn't gonna go our way yeah. and you could see the buy-in from the players like no coach we're, we want the streak to continue nice. and so that was just something that was pretty amazing to see it was it was leadership from our sophomores that then trickled into our freshmen who are now sophomores for us and they've been leading this program for the eight, past eight months and so I, I'm excited to see now that as we're moving forward into this season how much buy-in our, our current freshman class can buy into what the, uh, the the sophomore leadership class has. All right, so let's talk about those sophomores this season. Uh, mm -hmm. Who are you going to lean on? Who's going? Who's taking over? those leadership roles for the team? Leaning on all of them. <laughs> I, I think we have to. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm certainly going to list a, a few players that I think are going to stand out for us this upcoming season, uh, some that had some great accolades from last season. But in reality, the way we try to operate our team, we're, we're 24 on roster, and we expect all 24 to play uh, within, within the guidelines of, of a 90-minute game. I think that's one thing that separates us from some of our opponents in the conference is we're not just you know 10 or 11 strong. I feel like we're 24 strong. Yeah. So we want our, our players to 
place. So we're going to rely on, on our sophomore leadership. I think at any time I could have 11 sophomores uh, start, it, start in a match. I could also have 11 freshmen uh, start in a match. And that's something that uh, just just goes towards the, the growth and, and just the hard work of our, of our full class. But key players uh, returning, I think we start with the back line and, and build off of our goalkeeper, Anna West Driscoll. Yes. Um, I thought she had one of the, the strongest seasons, not just for our team last year, but in the entire conference run uh, in the history of the conference. I think there were four different times that she was uh, goalkeeper of the week. Uh, she was also nominated uh, for goalkeeper of the week for the NJCAA. She won that award at least once, I believe. I it may so. have been twice. Yeah. Uh, she finished with all state accolades, um, and, and she's going to be leading the back line again for us this year. It was, it was unique for her last year, where at, um, right at the beginning of the preseason, our, our returning goalkeeper uh, unexpectedly wasn't able to come back. So it was just her, and she started every uh, every match for us and uh, did a phenomenal job. Played. 90 minutes every single game unless there was overtime and then there was one game I think against Northwest where she got a yellow card had to go out for about a minute and a half and then she came back in but except for that she was uh, she was our lead, she was our starting goalkeeper and she'll continue that path uh, and, and lead our freshman goalkeeper AK uh, Trost from uh, from the Lafayette area Oxford area uh, she'll lead her and, and help balance out that time um, AK is a great goalkeeper too and uh, so we're going to try to balance out that time for them other sophomores um, Emily Hayward is returning Returning uh, is a returner for us. She's a leading goal scorer from last season. Uh, she's uh, she's already a D1 signee, a commit uh, going to attend University of North Alabama uh, this upcoming fall. But uh, she decided to stay for an extra semester with us, which we're very for fortunate yeah. for. Um, she has the opportunity to now graduate with honors, and also that'll help her with some different packages and things she can get through scholarships at North Alabama. But we expect big things from her uh, again. She she led us uh, in goal scoring as a freshman. We expect her to do some really good things for us out on the wing on the left side again this season. Another key player uh, is uh, Ashley Stevens. She was uh, third in, in goals, so it's pretty nice whenever yeah. two out of your top three goal scorers from the best season in program history are returning. And so Ashley Stevens is a sophomore from Amory. Uh, she was third in goals for us last year. She was an all-state uh, selection as well. And we just... You know, based on what she's been doing this this past fall and the spring, man, she's just grown so much more. Uh, she's she's been very dynamic always going forward, but now to see her more in possession and being comfortable on the ball, uh, she's really growing with that. And then um, in our midfield, Lexi Loden, uh, she's a returner for us as well, and she started every match for us in the attacking mid role. Uh, we expect her to continue that for this upcoming season. And then uh, and then on our back line, we have so many returners with Josie Kate Reeves, Lucy Dexter, Morgan Gaylor, Alexis Hall. They, they just showed. A a lot of leadership in our defending and as freshmen yeah. and now getting into this sophomore year we're expecting big things from them and to have that many that much talent returning on top of a really good recruiting class in your mm -hmm. freshman class it's a tough problem to have as a coach when it comes to making that starting lineup that's right but at the same time you sleep a little bit easier knowing you ain't got a you know you've got a lot of options there that's right so talk talk about those freshmen that are coming in this year yeah so uh key freshmen for us um yeah I, you know, we have uh 12 on roster this year so uh coming back or excuse me not coming back but uh coming in as freshmen uh, i think one of the key players that's coming in straight away is going to be uh a, actually a transfer she's a reverse transfer uh, from mississippi college so she played at mississippi college uh as a freshman she transferred down to us uh, this past fall. Her name's Sydney Hughes. Uh, she's a Tupelo High School graduate. Uh, we recruited her out of high school. She did great for her high school team and uh, just ended up getting a great opportunity to go to, to Mississippi College and, and actually started for them down there. So we think she can be pretty dynamic in our league, super fast, really good on the ball, uh, looking to score goals, and we want that in her role. She'll be a forward with us, so we expect that in her role. Another key player uh, is in the midfield, and uh, her, her name is Kirstie McGregor. She's an international student for us. Uh, she came, she comes from uh, Harrogate Town, uh, which is a club team in, in England. Uh, it's second division uh, women's club team out of England. Prior to COVID, uh, very competitive. I think they were second or third in their league and uh, nice. just came highly rated nice. uh, as a midfield player. And uh, we used an agency to work with her to, to create an opportunity for her to come here. So those are two key players that I know straight away that are going to do some great things for us. But we've got you know a lot of depth like what you mentioned. Yeah. I mean, I've already mentioned AK in the goalkeeping position. We've got uh, Morgan Mitchell, who's a leading goal sc scorer from Amory High School after Ashley Stevens left. Yeah. I think she finished with maybe around 35 or 40 goals her season. 
senior year. And uh, so she'll come in and be a wing player for us. Gracie Gustafson, Heidi Clark, these are players from Grenada that led Grenada High School to one of the best uh, records in the in the program's history. Um, Sarah Bickert, who's a center midfielder um, that's going to come in from Corinth High School, and then Maria Jones, uh, she's an outside back for us. These are all players I could go yeah. th- I could go through the whole <laughs> list. I know I'm I know I'm yeah, missing say, some. It's one of those unfortunate. You got so many good players, and you're going to sit back and be like. I forgot, you know, this one, yeah. this one. But that's a good problem to have. Yeah, and it, it, we don't really, at least the way I try to coach them, I try to make them mindful about, I don't expect our players to be 90-minute players. And right. so the way that we train, the way that we work, is high intensity and high activity for 10, 15-minute intervals. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we go a little bit longer in that. But uh, we, we, we did a scrimmage match, uh, I think it was last Friday morning, and weather was cold. It was, yeah. it was I think it was mid-50s, and it was a little chilly, and we kicked off at 8.30. And once the girls got their feet under them and started playing, they were absolutely flying and I even told them after the game I said you know this this is in comparison of like you could be the two top teams in the conference and you're all in the same you're all in the same team yeah. playing hard and that's that's no that's no distraction to our opponents we have an extremely tough conference and there's extremely great talent within this conference but to be able to scrimmage a match and let it be full blown for 90 minutes almost like it's a, a key division match mm-hmm. that's a big thing in the way that I try to recruit and develop this team so to have players that buy into that you know as competitors they want to come in and yeah. play 90 minutes and they don't they don't necessarily always care about the score right. but we have competitors on our team that realize you know they can't go as hard as they'd want to for 90 minutes mm-hmm. they're willing to do that work for 20 minutes 30 minutes at nice. a time and then rotate and let somebody else come in and do it and then we don't dip our, our talent level from what i've been seeing should be able to stay the same so that's pretty exciting all right so we're talking with coach davis strother the women's soccer coach here at icc kind of led me into my next question competition across the league this year mm-hmm. who is going to be some of the teams that we need to keep an eye on. Of course, the MACCC mm-hmm. is always tough. That's right. I mean, in every sport. But who are going to be some of these standard bearers, other than ICC, mm. uh, that uh, we need to keep an eye out this season? Well, I, I think our key uh, opponents in the North Division, uh, you know, the past couple seasons, it's always been uh, us and Holmes Community College kind of ranked one or two or two, you know, one one or three or somewhere within that. Um, so I think Holmes definitely in the North Division is, is someone that we're always mindful about. But like you said, I mean, the, you know, the conference is just – yeah. It's, it's extremely competitive, and even with us being separated, North Division, South Division, our opponents in the North, Hines has gotten extremely stronger. East, East Central has gotten extremely stronger. Northwest went through a coaching change from the fall, but the, we we scrimmaged them in the fall, and they were a very good team in the fall. They're only going to be even stronger now. That they've had the same amount of time that we have, and so uh, you know, for us, it's on any given day, we just have to make sure we're doing the best that we possibly can. The North. Uh, we will always be prepared. That's my job as a coach is to do my best to prepare them. In the South, I think Jones is going to be quite competitive. They had a really good recruiting class. Had an off year last year uh, in, in comparison to what Coach Dolores has been able to do. I know she wasn't pleased with that, so she went out and had a great recruiting class. I, I knew a lot of the players that she was recruiting because we, we, had, uh, we, had, we had earmarked those players as well. And so I know that they're going to be very strong. Pro River will return a lot of key players. They're going to be strong too. And then Meridian's had a good recruiting class, and Gulf Coast has had a recruiting class. Um, Southwest is in a little bit of a rebuilding stage with the new coach. Um, Colin is restarting a program from scratch. But even those teams, I know what they've been able to bring in with some of their international players. And uh, at any given day, we have to show up. And, and we've realized that in the yeah. past. So I, th- I think that that goes down to also sophomore leadership, making sure that these sophomores – make sure the freshmen understand how to buy in, how to prepare, how to know that it's nothing guaranteed. In high school, you may have one or two of those games where it's senior night or homecoming night and your your coach is fortunate enough to maybe book someone that's not quite up to your level. We we don't have that in our in our league. And now that we're moving to this division two status, I, I think the preseason rankings come out in a week or two. I would expect a few of us uh, Mississippi Division II programs to be ranked in the top 20 uh, just because of how competitive we've been in nice. the past. And, and that's exciting. We want we want to see as much recognition, not just for us at Edwamba, but we want to see recognition from across the league because that helps our recruiting. That helps our players then get identified for the next level. And it just uh, helps put more of a national stamp on the, whole, on the whole entire league for us. Well, David, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap things up? You know, I, I would like to talk a little bit about COVID and, and just, yes, and, yes. And, and, you know, just how much that uh, we're appreciative from the administrative staff and, and how resilient we've been through this process. It seems like it's, you know, it's almost been a full year and maybe even a little bit longer. And now it does seem like we've kind of taken that that turn. And so just to thank the administration for, for seeing the bigger vision and, and looking at things from a safe standpoint, from a protocol standpoint that could still be productive for our, for our students. I've talked with other coaches in other leagues and I've talked with other coaches from other 
from from other levels, and some of their students haven't even been on campus uh, since uh, since freshmen, you know, coming in for first time, or some of them haven't been able to train on campus. Some of them haven't even been able to have a season. So I know that it wasn't exactly the right fit for us, and I know it wasn't exactly what we wanted. But to have the opportunity to now be into a season, and we can see, you know, we're at the end line. We we're finally there. You know, I just I think the administration, I, you know, the leadership from across the state, the vision of what they were trying to do that's best suited for our students and our athletes um, and, and just you know I can't say thank you enough I, I went through COVID myself and, and navigated through that we had it a little bit uh, come through uh, with the team and, and just the way that our leadership especially Dr. Brad Boggs how he was so resilient and being adamant about being on the front side of stuff and not being overreactive but being very professional about it I, I can't thank them enough Dr. Allen Tyler Camp all, all of the ones that were in the decision making process just extremely appreciative Renaissance Rewards Extra is the checking account that checks all the boxes. Roadside assistance? Check. Cell phone insurance? Check. More than 400,000 local shopping discounts? Check. Up to $25 per month in ATM refunds and a great rate? Check. All in an easy-to-use mobile app. To open an account or find out more about Renaissance Rewards Extra checking, go to renaissancebank.com or visit us at any of our more than 190 locations throughout the South. Renaissance Bank understanding you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd, getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story is you. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Today tastes like game day at home. Like assigned couch seating. <laughs> tastes like coffee table dining. And an ice cold Coke to cool down the heat. It tastes like the game you've waited for all week with friends you've known your whole life. <laughs> Today tastes like watching football is supposed to. And it never tasted this good. <laughs> Coca-Cola. Together tastes better. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. That's home. <laughs> that's just like the Ravens. That's just like Pahokee, Florida. Um, that's my second home. I got my degree from there, my first degree, college degree. It's part of my heart, it's part of my soul, it's part of my spirit. And, you know, it's everything. You're the one with community college, baby. Uh, it's, it's everything. It shaped me up to being a great man because it was part of the journey of me becoming the young man I am today. And um, it's home, man. That, that's. That's it, like, I can go there and lay my head down without no problems. It'll woman community college the best star here. And that's gonna wrap up today's show here for the ICC Hour. I do want to thank our guest, Director of Advancement, Mr. Michael Upton. Remember, visit iccms.edu slash foundation or slash alumni to find out how you can support Itawamba Community College. We also want to thank Coach Mike Sullivan and Coach David Strother of the men's and women's soccer teams. Visit letsgoicc.com uh, to find their schedules, keep up to date with what's going on there with the soccer team, along with our other uh, intercollegiate athletic programs here at Itawamba Community College. Do want to remind you that they'll be in action tomorrow. You can watch that one on letsgoicctv.com slash red. That's let's go ICCTV.com slash red. Now, weather pending, it has moved out of the area, so we should be able to stream that. But if there is some rain, we we'll unfortunately won't be able to stream that coming your way. I believe they start at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. And then uh, the rest of the week uh, in athletics, you can find out more by visiting let's go ICC.com or following us on Twitter at let's go ICC. Don't forget to visit iccms.edu orientation registration is open now uh, you need to apply and get signed up for that you can also follow them on twitter at itawamba cc to find out more information 
This has been Adam Gore. Again, thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you all next week right back here on the ICC Hour on Super Talk Mississippi 101.9 FM. Why settle for a checking account that just holds your money? Renaissance Rewards Extra gives you so much more, like savings at more than 400,000 retailers, 24-7 roadside assistance, a cell phone protection plan worth up to $400, $25 in ATM fee refunds per monthly cycle, and a great interest rate when you meet three easy qualifications. Get extra today at rewardsextra.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. Here, you can be your best. The best train here. Learn here. Succeed here. Perform here. Win here. Thrive here. Itawamba Community College. The best start here. 